Live from New Bedford, ladies and gentlemen. This is the YouTube channel blog show of authenticity, inspiration, and realness. Also, of good times, personality, and fun. This is Eric Lee Machinigans of 1977. And now, here is your host of the show. He is Big Beefy E. He is Mr. Shenanigans and the elder statesman of the Rant and Raid podcast, Mr. Eric M. Lima. Thank you very much, Mr. Announcer, sir. Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans. Of 1977, episode 1631. It's a rare, it's a rare deal that I do try to do a video on a Sunday. As you know, because I usually have my family over and stuff. And, um, and usually I would, I would start, you know, doing it Monday through Saturday. But this is a very special occasion because I just finished watching AEW all in possibly one of the most insane events ever, you know, from an insane place in uh, Wembley Stadium in London, England. I, t I, I, I gotta tell you, it's uh, when I watched this event, man, it's been crazy, crazy, crazy. And uh, how crazy can it be? We have a few title changes that, is, that has occurred. I do believe three uh, of all the title changes, I believe... Um, I'm going to count, um, I am going to count one, two, uh, three, uh, four, five title changes, five title changes, what, uh, which titles changed hands, well, we'll well, I will, I'm glad that to, to take that, I will, um, double <laughs> Let's try that again. I'll be glad to uh, re um to, to recap what happened on All In. Just got done. Was it six minutes ago? From eleven to six, you're talking over seven hours, and the majority of those seven hours were wrestling matches, and were wrestling matches, which is a, always a good thing. And let's talk about the most insane matchup I have ever seen, and this has never been. I don't think it's ever been done before for the first time, but it is a sixteen man. Tag team matchup. You read that right. You 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 heard this right. Sixteen man tag team matchup. Let's tell. Let's let's. Uh, I gotta tell you who the players are in this matchup because you're gonna need a scorecard for this one because this is getting nuts. Uh, on one team, you got Tom Billington, the Dynamite Kid, Kid Sabian, Kyle Fletcher, Top Flight. That will be the Martin Brothers, Dante and Darius, along with Leo Rush. Action Andretti and Ro Rocky Romero. That's eight guys on one team. Against Jay Lethal, Satnam Singh, Anthony Ogogo, Prince, I mean, I'm, I'm Private Party, uh, that would be Mark Quinn and Isaiah Cassidy, The Dark Order, in this case, Al uh, Alex Reynolds and Johnny Hungy himself, John Silver, with Evil Uno in their corner. And, you know, Lethal and Singh will have Sunday Dutt in their corner and Aria Davari. And folks, it's one of the most insane six. The, but there, there was one moment where Leo Rush was going up against Satnam Singh. Satnam Singh's got to be seven foot four, and Leo Rush has got to be like five foot nine or something like that. It was like, it was like, oh boy! But, but despite the size, despite the size uh, Satnam Singh has with his team, the team of of Top Flight, Leo Rush, Action Andretti, Tom Bellington, Kip Sabian, Kyle Fletcher, and Rocky Romero won this sixteen won this very insane sixteen man tag team matchup. I mean, you got you gotta be an insane dude just to insane person just to um, have have that kind of matchup. It's it's pretty pretty insane, to say the least. But like I said, Sixteen-man tag team matchup. Hmm. Well, it could be doable now. AEW was the first one to pull it off. Meanwhile, all of that going on. John Don Callis is joining on commentary for th for that much. So that's got to be something. To <laughs> but hey, listen, his man won. His man was part of the winning team, Kyle Fletcher. Then it was the mixed tag matchup. 
on Stokely Hathaway versus, and Chris Statlander versus Tomohiro Ishii and Willow Nightingale. As you know, they'll face each other for the CMLL Women's World Championship at All Out. And the, if whoever wins the matchup gets to make the stipulation. Well, let's just say I knew this was going to happen. Uh, Willow Nightingale and Tomohiro Ishii won the matchup, but Stokely Hathaway tried to do his best. And no avail. <laughs> he couldn't even knock down Ishii. Unlike Stokely. Stokely. Just, just, Stokely just, um, just, Stokely, just, just take a loss. Take a loss, Stokely. So, Will Nightingale gets to meet in the stipulation. Meanwhile, Tony Schiavone interview, uh, interviewed Dr. Martha Hart and Tony Khan. You know, maybe people wondering, is Tony Khan dating Dr. Martha Hart? I don't know. Anyways. Um, Dr. Martha Hot wished the, uh, the winners of the tournaments, uh, Mariah May and Brian Danielson, good luck in their title matches. They earned it. Be very interested to see what happens. Well, and then it concluded the, um, and then a 10 man tag team matchup. And there will be, now, <laughs> they've been all Texas team, but Katsuyori Shibata is an honorary Texan, so. Shibata team with Sammy Guevara and Dustin Rose who are the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions. And along with the Von Eriks, Russ, um, Russ and Marshall, who are the Ring of Honor Six-Man Tag Team Champions with Dustin Rhodes. So Dustin Rhodes has got two titles. Six-Man Tag and just regular World Tag Team titles. Went up against the Cage Wagon is Brian Cage, who came out dressed like Wolverine. Hey, you know, I'm surprised that the Undisputed Kingdom didn't dress like Deadpool. That would be really hilarious, but... Anyways, the Undisputed Kingdom, Matt Taven and Mike Bennett, as you know, Roderick Strong is going to get ready for that casino gauntlet. And this was a heck of a matchup. And in the end, um, and in the end, semi, uh, all Team Texas won the matchup. And, uh, along, and along, uh, along with Katsuyori Shibata. But then uh, the Cage of Agony and Undisputed Kingdom, the losers, attacked the winners after the matchup. But then Kevin Von Eric was in the ring, barefoot. He was ready to claw somebody. Who did he get? Matt Taven. While the others got clawed as well. To uh, Tony Leona, the big, who was the biggest man out of that six-man uh, tag beside Brian Cage, was clawed twice by the Von Eric brothers. So, and that's how it ends right there. Meanwhile, Soraya, Harley Cameron, and the Knight family show up at All In, including some of their friends, their wrestling friends as well. And then Soraya and Harley address the London crowd, saying, listen, this show's not going to go on until I get some respect, blah, blah, blah. Then Jamie Hayter has made her comeback and interrupting Soraya and fights off Soraya's family and friends along with Harley Cameron and uh, the Knights and Harley do retreat. Even Soraya's mother tried to get in on the action, but unfortunately that is not the case. Well, then it kicked off with the trio's title in a London ladder match to kick off the main card, the patriarchy, Christian Cage. Uh, Christian Cage, Nick Wayne, and Killswitch to go uh, defending their title against the House of Black, Malachi Black, Brody King, and, and Buddy Matthews, the Bang Bang Gang, Juice Robinson, and the Guns, Colton and Austin Gunn, and then the, the wild card team of Pac and the Blackpool Combat Club, which with Claudio Castagnoli and Wheeler Yuta. <clears throat> well, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, this matchup got so insane. And now, Ladies and gentlemen, we have new trios champions. The first title change of five. I tell you, there were five title changes. This was the first of five. Oh, I wonder. Oh, the heck, this thing. It is the Pac and the and the Blackpool Combat Club, Claudio Castagnoli and Wheeler Yuta. They're now the new trios champions, and it's going to be a very interesting deal. So, but will this be a a theme? As you know, John Moxley is not been seen. So, and he's still part of the group. And, oh, he's still IWGP champion. I think he's not anymore. We'll, we'll start, uh, so, um, if he's still IWGP champion, it looks like more gold has been added to the Blackpool Combat Club. Well, we'll find out later on. Meanwhile, the AEW women's title was on the line. The lovely, one of my favorite lovely, uh, one, one of five re favorite reasons why to watch AEW. Timeless Tony Storm defending that title against the 2024 Owen Hart Cup tournament winner, Mariah May, who betrayed Tony Storm after winning the tournament. And, uh, 
and the glamour of Ryan May, Luther has made his return to assist Tony Storm. And then during the matchup, Mariah May ends up getting, giving a kiss to Nigel McGuinness on the forehead. But then you know, she goes over to her mother, because her mother was watching. And um, her mother is trying to comfort her and give her confidence. And all of a sudden, Mariah May slaps her own mother. I'm like, what in the world are you doing, woman? That's your mom. She wants to support you. Are you lost your mind? Everybody booed her. And it got to the point where... Uh, you know, Tony Storm went over and gave gave Mariah May's mother a hug. That was sweet, and that's a classy lady right there. Much respect and love to Tony Storm. Meanwhile, poor Mina Shirakawa is watching in the stands. Who is how she's going to be on? We shall see. And uh, in a shocker, another title change. Back-to-back -back title changes. That's right. We have a new AEW Women's World Champion in the glamour, Mariah May. This is going to get interesting now with Mina Shirakawa back in the fold, so to speak, in, in the States. Mom, Mina Shirakawa has got the Rev, she's the Undisputed Rev Pro UK British Women's Champion. So, this ought to be interesting, title for title maybe? Who knows? Down the road. Let's we'll see what happens if Mariah May has decided to turn against Mina Shirakawa. Meanwhile, the FTW title was on the line, but Jericho decided to perform with Fozzie before the match. Did, did the stupid hi guys thing. And, and and it was an FTW rules matchup, so FTW um, for the FTW title. Chris Jericho defending against Hook, and Big Bill and Brian Keith try to do everything they can to stop him because if Hook loses, he can no longer have a shot at the title. But all of a sudden, uh, Brian Keith got involved once again, and then Taz goes, "You know what? That's it." Because Taz was on commentary. That's it. I'm going to do something about it. He ended up attacking Brian Keith with the Taz mission, distracting Jericho, which uh, Hook uh, slapped on the red rum. One, two, three. We have a new FTW champion for a third time. Hook is a three-time FTW champion, and he shared a hug with his dad in the end. I thought that was a beautiful thing. But we ain't done yet. The AEW Tag Team titles are on the line. The Young Bucks defending against FTR and the acclaimed and as you know, the claim came out roasting both FTR and the Young Bucks. But to no avail, this was a great matchup. The Bucks retained the title. But then, as the Bucks were celebrating, the grizzled young veteran showed up. That's right, Zach Gibson and James Drake uh, confronted the Young Bucks. And then, they un and then they turned their attention to, to attack FTR after the match. I don't know. Who I was like, who side they on? It looks like they're trying to send a message everybody in the AEW tag team division and it seems like to me FTR will have to deal with them first and they'll have to deal with FTR first if they want to get their hands on becoming AEW World Tag Team Champions yep that's right the, the Grizzly Young Veterans kind of shocked they show up and then again it's in London England anything was possible at this rate then they have a, um, a casino gauntlet matchup and I'm going to count the participants in this matchup one two three Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Twelve competitors, a dozen competitors. The winner will get a shot at the AEW World Title, wherever that may be. Check it out: Orange Cassidy and the Rainmaker, Kazusuke Okada, the Continental Champion, decided to kick things off. And then the third guy that joined them, this is a shocker: Nigel McGuinness. Uh, decided to uh, come back. He looked good. He looked in great shape. And I didn't, I didn't know what the story is, what his status is as far as in-ring competition is concerned. I think he felt like with the um, with his hatred towards Daniel, uh, Brian Danielson, if he wins the matchup and then Danielson won the title, they can go at it for the championship. But then Kyle O'Reilly uh, came in fourth. And then Zack Sabre Jr. decided to get, get himself a shot at um, gave himself a uh, piece in that casino, casino gauntlet matchup. Roderick Strong came in. The uh, Ring of Honor World Champ Mark Briscoe came in. Hangman on a page full of uh, P and V, if you know what I mean, came in there. Jeff Jarrett, whom people start to love more, which is so super cool, um, ended up getting there. And the rumors are true, ladies and gentlemen. It is official. Ricochet has joined All Elite Wrestling. Ricochet, it was 
made his debut in the Casino Battle Royal. And then a couple of shockers in the end, too. Christian Cage, who recently lost the um, Frios Championship, decided to, uh, to get in there. And then Luchasaurus decided to go back to his old... Kill Switch went back to his own name, Luchasaurus. But well, Luchasaurus ended up helping Christian Cage win the match. And we'll have the contract. So, how will this play in the world? How this will, uh, how we, who would factor into the world title match? We will shall see. If he, if at all. Well, the American slash international title on the line, MJF, who I wanted to, uh, to all the British wrestling fans out there, just so you know, MJF does not represent us American wrestling fans. MJF's all about himself. He cares about nobody but himself. He doesn't care about the likes of me either. So, don't worry, British fans. I'm rooting for, I was rooting for Will Ospreay. And during the match, Daniel Garcia made a comeback attacking MJF. Wait a minute. I think Daniel Garcia stole the Dynamite Diamond Ring. I think what he... And uh, Will Ospreay took advantage of that. Ended up winning the matchup and became... You know, and when the referee was about to give him the title, he said, no, 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 I don't want that title. Christopher Daniels knows what's up. He said, you hold on, that fought. And he presented him with the international title. So once again, he is the international champion. Will Ospreay, two-time international champ. Yay. Thank you, Daniel Garcia, for shutting that beavis-looking butthead MJF up. Thank God. So, the TBS title was on the line. Mercedes Monet against Brit ba Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. Heck of a matchup, and Mercedes had a, a Monet had a plan. Had a battle plan, strategy going in this matchup, go after the injured back of Britt Baker. That kept her out for 10 months. And uh, Camille got involved in the matchup, but then Britt Baker said, you know what, have an idea. Hands the uh, New Japan Strong Women's Championship to Camille. She was about to use it, but then she turned around, throws it to Camille. She dropped dead. It was all a fake out. A little Eddie Guerrero. Referee ejects Camille from ringside, but despite that, Mercedes Monet ended up winning the match. Then it was the coffin match for the TNT title. You know, you know it's like the casket match in the WWE that the Undertaker is involved in many, many times. You play you no disqualification, no count out, no pinfall. Put your opponent inside the casket, close the lid, you win the matchup. I mean and these two went all out and Jack Perry did the real glass thing and everything else. A little shot at CM Punk. But in the end, though, um, he tied up Darby Allen, busted him open, um, put him in a body bag, and then put him... Uh, he was about to put him in the casket and close the lid. Darby Allen sits up. He got hit in, in the knee by Jack Perry and uh, closed the casket. Jack Perry retains the title, TNT title. It is my question, though. If Christian Cage decided um, to turn against, if Luchasaurus decided to lead the patriarchy, I would not be surprised if Luchasaurus will try to target Jack Perry. And I'm dead serious on this. I think with Jack Perry's new attitude, I personally believe that Luchasaurus will try to set him straight. But then again, who knows for sure what's going to happen. But as the and the Young Bucks came over to celebrate with with uh, with Jack Perry, and then it's Sting! Sting is back, and he decided both double uh, Scorpion Death, double uh, Scorpion Death Drop, both Young Bucks, and they tried to attack him, but they, you know, and they re the Elite retreats, and then Sting helps Darby Allen out of the casket. That's what leads into the AEW World Title match of Swerve Strickland and Brian Danielson. They had the final countdown. They had the rappers who uh, performed his theme song. And this was a heck of a matchup. This matchup was insane. Could have gone either way. And during the matchup at Hangman Adam Page, the man is so obsessed with Swerve. I mean, Swerve has gotten into his head. Distracted Swerve for a bit to the point where... And security decided to remove Page from, from ringside. And... I mean, after so many um, kickouts and all that, da uh, Brian Danielson finally locked in the LaBelle lock, and he was and Swerve almost got out of it. Then 
Brian Danielson pulled Pete Dunn, broke his fingers, and then slapped it back on. Swerve Strickland tapped out. We have a new AEW World Heavyweight Champion in Brian Danielson. Um, Brian's wife, Bree, and, her, and his two kids, Birdie and Buddy, climbed in the ring to celebrate. Along the BCC and Pac helped them out to celebrate the trio's champs. And it was a beautiful moment at the end. What's going to happen to AEW Dynamite the Fallout? We will soon find out. Man. Yeah, I'm sad that Tony Storm lost the title, but I'll tell you one thing. I think Mariah May, this will, this will give Mariah May an opportunity for um, uh, some future feuds. Maybe a possible feud with Mina Shirakawa. We don't know. It could be, um, could she, um, I don't know, Soraya could, could target her, or Mercedes Monet, or even Britt Baker. Jamie Hayter could target, target her as well. The possibility is endless now with Mariah May winning the title. So that's going to be a huge deal. Brian Danielson winning the title. you got Christian Cage. A huge opportunity. He'll probably challenge Brian Danielson and trying to end his career. I think that's a big thing, too. I think Brian Danielson's father passed away, too. So <laughs> Christian Cage. So I think Christian Cage will be playing some mind games with Brian Danielson. And, but then you've got Will Ospreay being international champ again. We'll see what happens in that situation. For sure. Who the young, which tag team will the Young Bucks face? We saw the Grizzled Young Veterans show up, and uh, we'll find out if FTR will have to go jump through another obstacle to try to get back at the young, back to the Young Bucks and the AEW tag team titles. Who and who, Jack Perry retained the title against Darby Allen. Who's next to uh, step up against Jack Perry? Who knows for sure? TBS title. Mercedes Monet retains. Who knows? Hikaru Shida's got got an open opportunity now. If you think about it now. If Hikaru Shida wants to be the ace of the women's division, she's got a huge opportunity with Mariah May's new champ and Mercedes Monet retaining the title. Hikaru Shida can take her to get, can have her pick, uh, or if, if if Mariah May wants to celebrate and bring Mina, Mina Shirakawa to the mix, will she turn on Mina Shirakawa? Remember, Mina Shirakawa is now the undisputed British women's champion of Rev Pro UK, so that's going to be an, uh, a huge deal. There, we'll see what happens if that's the case. We'll find out this Wednesday on Dynamite. Thank you for tuning in. Episode 1631 of Eric Lee Machine Yandy Games of 1977. I want to appreciate all of you to supporting the channel as well. And we'll continue on. So tomorrow we're going to have um, the final Martindale Monday of August 2024 of Tic Tac Doe. Final gameplay there of August 2024. And the final Raw also before Bash of Berlin this coming Saturday. As you know, that Julia is. Just to let you know, Julia has completed her her dates with Marigold. Now she's on her way to NXT, the WWE. If I, I feel like Samoa Joe. Oh, Roxy! Guess who's coming to dinner? Possibly this coming Sunday. And I think if Roxanne Perez retained the title against Jada Parker, here comes Julia! We'll find out for sure. I'm really excited about it, so we'll see what happens. Or or they play a part where the storyline injury, Jada Parker can't go, not medically cleared. Who is who's gonna replace her? There you go. That's what I would say. But Jada, this is Jada Parker's opportunity, and I'm sure she'll take it. So we'll see what happens. I'm kinda curious to see how, how the whole thing goes down. So but AEW Dynamite, I mean AEW all in, great event, good event overall. I went Five and five in my picks, so one five picks, lost five picks. Hey, even score? Hey, I'll take it. So, so um, that's it. So until the next episode comes rolling around, Mr. Announcer, take us home. That is all for today's episode. This is your announcer speaking for Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. A big beefy E. Do it for Bob Saget Productions and in association with a Raven Bow for Telepictures and Distribution. Thank you for watching today's episode. Tune in next time for another episode of Earthly Machine Anigans of 1977. Goodbye for now.